There is no separating hurricanes from politics, particularly when one such storm began unraveling a presidential administration's illusion of competence three years ago today. And when another storm will threaten the Gulf Coast next week, possibly making landfall just as that president's party convenes to launch its new nominee. Our third story in the countdown, that plus the political whirlwind of the last 24 hours with our guest filmmaker Michael Moore. Today, the third anniversary of Hurricane Katrina having made landfall, leading to the unforgettable and unforgivable devastation in New Orleans and the Gulf Coast of Mississippi. But on the same day three years ago, Senator McCain celebrated his birthday alongside President Bush with a nice big cake. And today, Gustav, strengthening once again to hurricane strength, expected to grow to a Category 3 storm by the time it makes landfall, probably early Tuesday, somewhere along the Gulf Coast. Despite a report in the Washington Post that Republicans might delay the start of their convention in Minneapolis, RNC, actually St. Paul, RNC officials say at this point the convention will go forward as planned. As promised, let's bring in documentary filmmaker Michael Moore, also author of the just-released Mike's Election Guide 2008. Michael, good evening. Welcome back. Uh, good evening, Keith. Thanks for having me back. And uh, I, I was just thinking uh, this uh, Gustav is proof that there is a God in heaven. <laughs> I, uh, I mean, just I have it planned at the same the, the, time. I mean, I, I, yeah, that it would, it would actually uh, be on its way to New Orleans for day one of the re, uh, Republican convention up in the Twin Cities at the at the top of the Mississippi River. Uh, I mean, certainly, I hope nobody uh, gets hurt. I hope everybody's uh, taking cover, but. Uh, uh, you know, the, I don't. I, I can't see what you showed. I don't know if you showed the the cake there that they had uh, three years mm -hmm. ago today with McCain and Bush. Um, when Marie Antoinette, <laughs> when she said "Let them eat cake," I I think she was speaking figuratively. Uh, they they literally were while New Orleans was drowning, eating cake. Uh, so it's um, I don't know. I let's hope let's hope things get better. Hey, you know, Michael, that uh, the thing about uh, uh, the weirdness of, of Gustav at this time uh, is a little e is a little weirder even than that because uh, one of Dr. Dobson's uh, preachers had called for everybody to pray for rain during Obama's speech last night. So uh, you really we're really playing with the elements and and uh, and Mother Nature with that stuff. Uh, let me ask you about about the and what I hear, you have posted and I hear the again on your Dobson's, website. Uh, I, his actual name is Gustav. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> well, I don't know if that's true. We'll just yeah, mate, well, starting or, a rumor. Or goose, goose, goose something. Um, you have posted on your website the, the uh, open letter from September 11th of 2005, which called out the administration for its failures, including its reaction to 9-11. Uh, in, in some ways, does the public's Bush fatigue and his lame duck status help Senator McCain by making people just sort of forget all the crap of the last eight years? Well, I hope not, uh, because McCain was part of that crap. Uh, he's, uh, he was doing his uh, uh, job there in the Senate uh, as uh, Bush's uh, foot soldier, uh, helping to take this country down in so many ways, uh, economically, um, uh, with the war in Iraq. Uh, I mean, you go, down, you, you go down the whole list every night, and you do such a great job of that, so I, I don't need to repeat everything here. But uh, I, I really, um, uh, I, I think, you know, my biggest fear with, with McCain uh, uh, getting elected is that he, he's going to continue not only uh, the wars that we're in, but uh, another war with Iran. Uh, and it's, it's uh, uh, this has got to stop at some point. I mean, it, I, don't, I don't even want to hear about Iran. I don't want to hear about weapons of mass destruction or what they're building or, or whatever. In fact, I got to tell you, that honestly, and I think anybody wants to be honest if they ask themselves this question if the Iranians had invaded Canada and Mexico the way that we've invaded Afghanistan and uh, Iraq on both sides uh, of Iran uh, if, if we were under the same situation I think uh, Keith actually you and I would join in on building whatever we could to defend ourselves against these two armies that would be on both of our borders I mean it's just uh, it's just crazy and I think we're gonna have more of the same a supreme, a supremely good point. Uh, to uh, something positive that might change things, the Obama speech last night. I, I mean, I saw this as five different speeches fused into one, with that one word kind of really launching it. That that shout of enough. What stood out for you? Oh, it was. You know, actually, uh, if you remember Robert uh, Byrd uh, in the Senate in October of uh, 2002. Uh, when he was gave that eloquent speech uh, when they were going to vote for the the war, 
and and he held he had a little copy of the Constitution in his hands, and he held it up and he just shouted enough, and that and when and when when Obama uh, did that again last night. It just sent a chill, I think, through everyone, and, and it's finally like, mm -hmm. it, it felt like uh, there, here was a Democrat that found his spine, that was going to stand up, that was going to fight back, uh, and he just kept, like you said, 19 punches there, uh, 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 just, just saying it in such clear language for anyone to get. Anybody can under that, that when he said John McCain, he just doesn't get it. Uh, I just thought that was, that was just perfect and uh, I could feel millions of heads nodding in the living rooms across America. Yeah, probably, well, as it turns out, probably about 38 million. Um, uh, today, of course, the McCain response, picking this <laughs> uh, governor of Alaska as his running mate, and I was just thinking about this after, after we finished talking about it in the news of the day. Uh, th there's something a little unusual about seeing him with a woman vice president when it's less than a year since uh, he was campaigning and some woman called Hillary Clinton a bitch, quote, a bitch to, uh, to his face, and he laughed. I mean, he didn't even call her out on it. Now suddenly he's got a woman vice president. Uh, th this is, uh, we're through the looking glass here, people, are we not? Well, cynicism, uh, they've, they've refined this to an art form, the Republican Party and McCain in particular. Uh, their, they, their treatment of women uh, uh, throughout the decades, uh, uh, leading up to even now, this sort of attitude that women are so stupid that they're going to just vote for somebody because they're a woman, even though this woman is against the very things that, that women are for and when the things that women need. I mean, they really think women are, I guess, just dumb or something. And, and they're in for a big shock. Uh, somebody should tell them, actually, that more women show up to the polls than men. And uh, I don't think women across uh, the country right now are feeling honored by this uh, uh, event uh, today. And, and you know, it's funny, Keith, uh, this morning watching uh, MSNBC and CNN and everything, everybody trying to pronounce her name. Nobody, because nobody knew who it was. No, nobody could even even say the name. It was it was just, uh, and I think, uh, I, I don't know what they're thinking here, but uh, uh, I, it's, I think it's good news for Obama and, and, uh, and uh, Biden. Well, like I said at the start of the show, as I was waking up, Michael, I, I, I thought I heard, uh, I heard it on the radio, and I said, he picked Michael Palin from Monty Python's Flying Circus? Um, <laughs> Michael Moore, the author of Mike's Election Guide 2008.